Oh shoot, I almost dumped it over. <laughs> Hi, welcome to another episode of Grub and Gab with me, Pixie, where I show you how to make something delicious to eat, and then I eat the delicious thing while talking about various topics. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make, ah, sorry, <laughs> the bowl was a lot hotter than I expected, uh, so I'm going to be teaching you how to make this delicious and easy potato bacon soup every time I post it, ah, sorry. <laughs> Gotta put it down. My fingers can't handle holding a hot bowl for a prolonged periods of time for some reason. <laughs> it's like my fingers are sensitive and can burn easily like any other human. <laughs> Every time I post this picture of the soup on social media, I always get questions and ask the recipe on how to make it. So I finally took down measurements you know, wrote everything down so I can share how to make it with you guys. And today I'm going to be talking about food allergies. So before I start stuffing my mouth with this very hot soup <laughs> and talking about food allergies, let me show you how to make this gluten-free, delicious potato bacon soup. Start by cutting your bacon into smaller strips. Then put in a large pot to cook over medium heat. As you cook the bacon, make sure you stir frequently and even it out at the bottom of the pot to ensure that it cooks and crisps up evenly. We're going to cook out the bacon till all of them are crispy and we've rendered out most of the fat. Once the bacon is golden brown and crispy, remove it from the pot and set aside in a bowl for later use. There's a lot of bacon grease at the bottom of the pot. You can either drain most of it, leaving two tablespoons in. I'm lazy and don't like to clean up, so I just left all the bacon fat in there. And to the bacon fat, we're gonna add one medium diced onion. And we're gonna stir it around and cook it on medium heat for about five minutes or so. We wanna get the onions nice and translucent. Be sure also to scrape the bottom of the pot to get up the cooked bacon bits. To the onions, we're going to add two bay leaves, one tablespoon of dried parsley flakes, and a good generous grinding of black pepper. Stir around and continue to cook for a couple more minutes to help the herbs release their flavor. Next, we're going to add approximately 8 cups of diced potatoes. I like to use Yukon Gold potatoes because if you accidentally overcook them, they don't turn to complete mush. Plus, the skin is thin and tender, so you don't have to worry about peeling them. Just make sure you give them a good scrub. So we're going to add the potatoes to the pot and give everything a good mix to ensure that the herbs and the onions are mixed throughout the potatoes. To the pot, add 8 cups of low-sodium chicken broth or chicken stock. Then give everything a good mix and bring it up to a simmer. Once it's simmering, place a lid onto the pot and set a timer for 20 minutes. Once the timer is done, fish out a piece of potato and check it to make sure it's fork tender. If they're not tender yet, just keep boiling it for a few more minutes at a time and keep checking to make sure they're done. Okay, so here's my secret ingredient for getting thick and creamy potato soup. You want to get one packet, that's 4.7 ounces, of instant mashed potatoes. You can get any flavor you want. My favorite one to use is roasted garlic. 
Start by adding half the packet of instant potatoes first and give it a good stir to make sure all the potato flakes dissolves in the broth. Once that's mixed in, stir in the rest of the instant mashed potato packet. Keep stirring and mixing until there's no dry spots left. To the pot, we're now gonna add two cups of corn kernel. You can use frozen corn or canned corn, it doesn't matter. Then we're gonna add one 7 ounce container of diced roasted green chilies. We're going to dump in the whole thing, liquid and all. Give everything a good mix, then put the lid on it and let it cook for another 5 minutes to ensure that the instant mashed potatoes have completely rehydrated. After 5 minutes, add in your crisp bacon and give a good stir to ensure the bacon is distributed throughout the soup. Give it a taste and adjust the seasoning as needed. Then dish it out into serving bowls. Now here's where you can get creative and add extra toppings to make the soup extra delicious. My favorite toppings to use are shredded cheddar cheese, croutons, and sliced green onions. The written recipe with full measurements, as always, is on my website, pixienoms.com. Ta-da! And that is how you make this easy and quick bacon potato soup to drink. I have some iced tea. And you can't really see it on camera, but it's uh, in a very precarious position right now. The soup is pretty much at the lip of the bowl. Uh, so before disaster happens and I knock the whole thing over or it spills, uh, let me go ahead and take a taste, get a bite so it's not so full. Whew. Steamy and hot. Mm. The potatoes are soft and tender and creamy. The soup, the broth itself is creamy because we used instant potatoes to thicken it up. You get pops of sweetness from the um, bits of corn in there. You get smokiness of the bacon. Mmm. And there's a very, very, very mild heat from the roasted green chilies that we put in there. Okay, let's get to gabbing about food allergies. If you're one of those few people who have zero food allergies at all, I am 100% completely envious of you. So I'm basically allergic to three things. It's alcohol, any and all alcohol, hard liquor, beers, wines, all of it. They just... I get a really bad, severe reaction to it. I'm also allergic to bananas and coconuts. Um, so the coconut allergy, it's anything coconut, like coconut milk, coconut meat, coconut oil, and oh my gosh, the amount of things that coconut oil is in is absolutely astounding. And it's not only just the food part that, you know, I'm allergic to, but there's a lot of coconut oil used in beauty products. So any and all products that are derived from coconut, I'm absolutely allergic to. So I can no longer use uh, liquid shampoos. So I've had to switch to a solid bar shampoo that's not have any coconut product at all. Um, I have to read beauty labels very carefully because um, when there are products derived from coconut oil or coconut, it's not specifically labeled coconut anymore because they changed the properties of what it is. So it's no longer coconut, uh, but it still is derived from coconut. So therefore I am still allergic to it. And let me just tell you, one of my biggest, biggest, biggest pet peeves about having these allergies and these food allergies 
especially the coconut oil because there's this whole trend recently of cooking with coconut oil and um that's just really obnoxious to me because I'm allergic to it. So everyone's been putting it in everything. So I have to ask specifically, you know, like, do you use coconut oil to cook this? And I just feel like I'm being a burden when I ask about things because I don't want to die. Anyway, so the one pet peeve that I have about these food allergies is like when you tell someone about the food allergy and they're like, Hmm, I've never heard of that before. Are you sure you're allergic to those things? And it's like, uh, yeah, pretty sure I'm definitely allergic to coconut, banana, and alcohol. Uh, I tried it, didn't work out so great. And people think that just because they've never heard someone allergic to a certain type of food or thing before that the allergy somehow doesn't exist. Like, oh, I've never heard of anyone being allergic to bananas. It's like, well, if you want to see me swell up and die, then let me eat a banana for you and then you can witness it. <laughs> it's like, just because you've never heard of it doesn't mean it doesn't exist out there in the world. I mean, you can't know everything and at some point you're going to learn. And it's fine if like they're asking because they're not sure or like they're like, oh, well, what part of the banana are you allergic to? It's like um, the whole thing. It's kind of like asking a person who's definitely allergic to peanuts. It's like, what part of the peanut are you allergic to? Is it just the shell or the nut itself? All right, so I'm going to eat some more soup while it's hot. It's actually lukewarm now. <laughs> Too much talkie talkie. Another annoyance to me is like when I explain people that I'm allergic to alcohol, they suddenly become like an expert as if they know more about my allergies and my allergic reactions than I do myself. Like I'll explain I'm allergic to alcohol, beer, wine, hard liquors, all of it. I don't react well to it. And they'll be like, hmm, are you sure it's not just an Asian flush thing? You know, because a lot of Asians turn red when they drink alcohol as a reaction. And it's like, no, it's like beyond that. It's I break out into hives, my face swells up, my throat gets swollen, um, and I don't have a happy fun time. So yeah, pretty sure it's not just a, oh, it's the normal you turn red from drinking alcohol reaction. It's more than that, you know. Um, I think people are <laughs> well versed to know what they're allergic to and how their body reacts to it. So a lot of times I find myself, uh, when I talk to people, I diminish or lower the severity of my allergies or I don't even mention it like you know if I tell someone I don't drink I just tell them I'm sober because for some reason in people's minds it's more acceptable for someone to be sober as a conscious decision than it is to be allergic to alcohol like legitimately allergic to alcohol like no one's allergic to alcohol, but if you choose to be sober, yes, that's acceptable. Like, I don't understand that line of thinking because people are allergic to whatever they're allergic to. Another thing that happens when I tell people I'm allergic to something, and this is kind of annoying too, is like when I tell them I'm definitely allergic to coconuts and bananas, they ask, what happens if you eat coconuts or bananas? It's like, I just said I'm definitely allergic to coconuts and bananas. Pretty sure if I eat coconut or bananas, I'm going to die. Just, just a hunch. I think that's what deathly allergic to means. Or maybe I'm not understanding the English language quite as well as I thought I did. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of like asking someone, you know, like, they're definitely allergic to peanuts. What happens if you eat peanuts? Well, more than likely, they're going to die. Well, how do you know? Because they've came very, very close to it before, probably. 
And it's like, oh, I've never heard anyone being deathly allergic to coconuts and bananas before. Um, so what happens? Well, as with most deathly allergies in food, if you consume the product that you're deathly allergic to, you go into anaphylactic shock, which basically means your throat swells up, you can't breathe, and you die because you can't breathe anymore. And I understand that, you know, people might be curious because they've never heard of these allergies before, but it's one of those things where it seems like they're asking more so out of disbelief than wanting to learn. And when it comes down to it, you know, people really don't choose the food allergies that they have. Like, I wish I wasn't deathly allergic to coconut because they use coconut oil in so many things now. It's in chocolates, it's in um, cookies, it's in crackers. Um, people use it to cook things. Basically, anything that has vegetable oil in it, there is a good chance that there's coconut oil in it as well. Um, like for this recipe, there was a packet of instant mashed potatoes that I used to buy and I used to use to make this soup, but I can't buy that brand anymore because they've switched from canola oil to a canola and coconut oil blend. So <laughs> it's one of those things where like more companies are using coconut oil and I always constantly have to read food labels and it's not as easy as just walking to the store grabbing things off the shelf anymore. So if I could not be allergic to coconuts, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Alrighty. Last bite, last bite, last bite, last bite, last bite. <laughs> And we're done, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching another episode of Grub and Gab with me, Pixie. Time to wash up, do the dishes, and put away all the leftover soup. So until next time, toodles, bye. And do the dishes so ow it just... oh the doggy's back it's gonna bark closer now I think it's over now. Yay! Finally.